Greetings and welcome. I'm glad you're here along for this adventure. I'm going to be restoring this 1973 Harishoff America Cat Boat. I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on this boat, its design history, and uh, why I wanted one so much. For the past several years, I'd been sailing a late 1970s Lightning, which I restored. It was in pretty rough shape when I got it, but did a lot of fiberglass work, painting, all of the woodwork, and a little bit of work on the rigging, and it's been a great boat. However, there are some problems with the Lightning, at least the way that I sail it. Lightnings are racing boats, and they're meant to be crewed by at least two or three people. I was trying to use it by myself as a cruising boat. It's also a boat that didn't handle heavy winds very well with just one person. Additionally, it was hard to take other people out on it, especially guests who have never been out on a sailboat before. I needed a boat that was a lot more stable, had a mainsail that could be reefed, handled all by one person, including stepping the mast and rigging, which I could not do with the lightning, something with a motor to help me get in and out of the dock on windy days, and ultimately something I could take around to different places like Lake Erie or even the sounds of the Outer Banks of North Carolina. When I started sailing at the Indian Lake Yacht Club in Russells Point, Ohio, I saw two other members of our yacht club that had Harishoff America Cat boats. As soon as I saw these boats, I immediately fell in love with the design. They were elegant and classic, maintaining all of the wonderful features of a New England cat boat with the modern convenience of a fiberglass hull. The Harishoff America has a gaff sail, which I've always loved, which can be reefed in higher winds and sailed by just one person. It is a wide, beamy, extremely stable boat with plenty of room in the cockpit for other guests to come along as the centerboard trunk is fitted farther forward into the cabin, leaving an open floor cockpit devoid of obstacles. The Harishoff America also has the interesting feature of an engine well that fits an outboard motor inside the boat. That way an outboard engine doesn't stick out the back of the boat and get caught on rigging, and I think it also looks a lot better. Cat boats have been a classic design around New England for over a hundred years. Aside from being a mainstay as a work boat in the area, they also became very popular with recreational sailing. The Harishoff America Cat Boat was designed by Halsey Harishoff, who was the grandson of Nathaniel Harishoff, who designed all of the famous America's Cup boats around the turn of the century. I got a tip that there was one for sale listed on the Cat Boat Association's website. I bought it, drove it down from Cleveland, Ohio to a location near me where I can work on it in my spare time. I'm really looking forward over this winter to getting this boat back in shape. I'm not going to be able to do everything I want to do uh, to it over this winter, but I'll be able to get it back in the water and make it seaworthy again by the time spring rolls around. Now some of you might be wondering about the name on the boat. That was the previous owner's uh, name. I'm going to be naming it the Seahawk, and I'll get into that in a later episode as to uh, why I chose that name and what that name means to me. Now the first thing I'm going to do is give you a little bit of a walk around on this boat, a little bit of a tour to show you uh, some of its features and some of the things that are obviously going to need to be repaired and fixed up. Most things I need to do, a few things I want to do, it's going to depend on time and weather. Probably the biggest thing I need to repair on this boat is the cockpit sole. It's pretty well completely shot. It seems to be pretty sturdy around the edges, but the middle is extremely soft. You can see several patches that were applied here, and there's about a foot-long crack that I think if I put all my weight on it, I'd probably crash right through it. It's going to require extensive fiberglass work, some woodwork to build some reinforcing underneath it, and I'm also going to build a wooden grate over the top of it to add some aesthetic improvement as well as a little better grip for the floor. Throughout the entire deck and cabin house, there are dozens and dozens of stress cracks and spider cracks. I'll show you how to sand these down, route them out, get them primed and get them filled with fairing compound, ready for paint. The deck and cabin house also has kind of a gray blue paint to it, which is not original to the boat. There are several places where it's even worn off where you can see the paint underneath it. But this paint on here is extremely slippery, even without it being wet. When it is wet, it's almost impossible to stand on. So I'm going to be adding some sort of non-skid to both the deck and the cabin house. Additionally, I'm also going to change the color back to something that's a little closer to a traditional color like a Bristol beige or Hatteras white. The spars in the mast are not their original colors. They should be a little lighter. So I'll be painting the spars a more traditional color as well. 
The bottom paint is also going to be taken off and I'm going to apply a new coat of paint to that, although I'm not going to be using anti-fouling paint. I'll get into that a little bit more in a later episode as to why I'm going to do that. All of the woodwork on the boat needs to be stripped and refinished. The vast majority of it is teak, but I'll be stripping and varnishing all of the woodwork to get it back into pristine condition. Some of the woodwork though I may have to replace. I've got a few mysteries that I have yet to figure out how to solve, and I might be asking some advice on those. The woodwork extends even into the rigging. This is part of the gaff boom. I'm not sure I can save this piece and I may have to completely refabricate it. This rigging also uses mast hoops, all of which I think I'm going to have to rebuild and find some more hardware for. There are places that make these, but I'm going to try and make my own. I've decided to rewire the entire boat. It's very antiquated and there are far better solutions now like LED lighting, plus the wiring here is such a mess it's hard to figure out where anything goes. I'm also going to take off all of the deck hardware. That's both for painting as well as to refurbish and repair some of the deck hardware. I doubt these winches have had a maintenance overhaul in a long, long time. The engine is a little big for this boat. It needs to be cleaned out, refurbished, and redone. Or at least I need to find out if that's even feasible. So in a nutshell, these are the things I need to accomplish before the spring. It's a pretty ambitious list. The cockpit sole needs to be replaced. Woodwork needs to be refinished. The deck and spars need to be repaired and painted. Bottom paint needs to be removed and replaced. The engine needs to be refurbished. Rewire the electrical system. And the deck and rigging hardware need to be refurbished or rebuilt. So that's what I'm going to be working on for the next few months. Now there are several things here on this project that I'm more than happy to show you how to do it. I am not a professional, but I do have a lot of experience with this uh, sort of thing, with woodworking and some fiberglass work. Other things I might be uh, needing some help with. So while I'm happy to show you some DIY tips, I'm also going to be asking for some advice and help once in a while. Now that being said, I am more than happy to look at and reply and, and connect with people through the comments, but I do have one thing you need to be aware of about the commenting procedure. You see, everything that I've been through in my life, I have developed a medical condition you need to be aware of. I am bovine fecal intolerant. Right there, spell that for you. That means that I can put up with about this much bull or my head explodes. So, if you're interested in being a nice and friendly person and enjoy restoration and of sailboats and sailing and all that stuff, hey, come on aboard and uh, leave a comment, leave a suggestion, I'm more than happy to look at it. If you just want to be a troll, I'm going to throw you overboard, I got no time and I'm not interested in debating with you or flaming you, you just go on overboard and I'm going to leave you behind. Thanks for joining and I will be back as soon as I can with another episode on what I'm doing to restore the sea.